testing, testing. Testing, testing.
嗨，嘉瑞。啊哈，嗨嗨，哎，那个令龙还没有上来哈。哦、oh, ，对，我提醒一下令龙老师。嗨，佳瑞。嗨，哦嗨，玲珑。哎、欸，玲珑听得到我说话吗？你啊，你好像我听不到你讲话哎、欸。嗨，玲珑。呃。哎，现在听到了。哎，那个李龙，你能听到我说话吗？啊，能。你好，宋老师。好久好久好久不见。好久不见。哇，我们时间也也快也快到了，然后就这样，就是我先介绍你啊，我基本上就念一下你的那个 short intro， 然后嗯、呃，你就开始讲。然后呃 ，by the way， 佳瑞，你还没有开始录吧？呃，然后那个。哦，要开始了吗？你要开始的话，我就开始讲英语了。呃，也，我想啊，我要不要不就这样，就是你你你你可以，就是说我简介可念简介可能就不需要录了，但是就是那个等那个孔老师讲的时候，你开始录，你觉得呢 ？Either way is fine， 你看你是怎么习惯怎么来都可以。Um, I will just get started to、uh, introduce Professor Kong.、Uh, welcome to our ARL seminar series.、Um, today, it's our great honor to have a Professor Ling Long Kong、uh, to give us a, a talk.、Um, Professor Ling Long Kong is an associate professor at the Department of Mathematical and Statistical Sciences of the University of Alberta. He's a Canadian Research Chair in Statistical Learning. He has published more than 50 peer-reviewed manuscripts, including many top、uh, statistical journals and top conferences in machine learning.、Um, currently, Ling Long is serving as Associate Editor of the Journal of the American Statistical Association 
International Journal of Imaging Systems and Technology, Canadian Journal of Statistics, member of the board of directors of the Statistics Society of Canada and the Western um, North American region of the International Biometric Society. The ASA Statistical Imaging Session Program Chair passed and the ASA Statistical Computing Session Program Chair elect. His research inter interests include statistical machine learning, high dimensional data analysis, neural imaging data analysis, robust statistics and quantile regression. Um, uh, without further ado, uh, let's welcome Ling Tong. Ling Tong, please get started. Thank you, Ray, uh, for the introduction. Also, thanks Feng Tu for the invitation. Um, today, uh, I'm happy to share a recent work of our group. Uh, it's time to uh, understand mixing for deep reinforced learning and application. So this is uh, a joint work uh, of my uh, some of my trainees and also my colleague. Um, there are two first author. Uh, one is my PhD student, Ke Sun, and the other one is my post, uh, Ya Fei Wang. Well, here is an uh, outline of my talk. First, uh, I will give an introduction, some preliminary um, materials, motivation, and uh, our contribution. So um, first, let's look at this uh, um, Markov decision um, process. I believe most of you are very familiar with this, uh, this MDP. Uh, the agent's uh, interaction uh, with its environment can be uh, naturally modeled as uh, a MDP. So this uh, uh, five uh, tuples. Uh, we have uh, S, which is a uh, state space. Uh, we have A, which is uh, action space. Um, we have this transition probability, or we have the environment transition uh, dynamics, which um, the input would be the um, the um, state space action and the next state space. And then we have this reward function R defined on this uh, uh, state space and also action space. Um, usually we have this uh, uh, discount factor gamma. And for this uh, uh, MDP, um, we can define the Q value function, uh, which we use it to evaluate the expected return uh, starting from a particular state action pair. Um, this is a, a definition of this uh, Q function uh, starting from a particular uh, state and a particular uh, function, a uh, particular uh, action. And here this gamma is uh, and the discount factor, as you can see with the time passing by, the effect of discounting, uh, discount factor uh, becomes more and more. Um, this is the basic of this MDP. Now, um, the next important thing is this uh, um, Bellman equation. For this uh, Bellman optimality operator T, uh, which can define as, a, as this one, um, we uh, have this uh, Bellman operator um, action on this uh, value function, then uh, here, this is the maximum of this value function. Now, uh, if you look at this uh, um, Bellman equation, uh, you will see this reinforced learning actually is intrinsically linked to um, the fixed point iteration, uh, this optimization problem. In sense, the optimal value function actually is a fixed point of Bellman uh, optimality operator. And then um, at the beginning, when we started the project, we thought, you know, maybe uh, we can, um, because uh, Yang Fei actually is, uh, um, um, is good at uh, optimization and uh, he knows she knows something about this uh, Anderson acceleration method, then she's thinking maybe we can use this on this uh, uh, fixed point uh, problem. Um, so um, that's why we start this project. Um, you know, existing reinforced learning algorithm um, still suffer from the slow convergence and sample inefficient. 
Um, so we want to do something uh, from this optimization perspective to make this uh, uh, reinforced learning calculation and um, faster. Then on um, Yafe uh, and uh, Ke, Ke is uh, from reinforced learning perspective, we talked about this and uh, also we checked literature. Um, we find, uh, yes, indeed, uh, the uh, Anderson mix, uh, mixing is uh, a, um, could be an effective um, method to do this uh, multi-step uh, interpolation. However, it has been heuristically applied into reinforced learning already. But um, these empirical improve, improvements in um, convergence have so far uh, laid a rigorous mathematical uh, justification. And uh, uh, I am a um, statistician, or in other words, applied uh, mathematician. So um, that's why uh, we attack this problem uh, from rigorous um, mathematic, um, um, mathematical justification perspective. And that's actually um, the um, initial reason why I get into uh, reinforced learning uh, area. Uh, I remember uh, like two years ago um, when Sutton get his new book, we talk about it, I, I give one of his new book and uh, put these words uh, in front of the book. Um, it says, let us together figure out the mathematics of the mind. And uh, it's actually, it's him uh, encouraging me to get into this uh, uh, reinforced learning uh, area. Now, let's look at uh, uh, our contribution, what, what we did um, in terms of this uh, perspective. Um, we um, contribute uh, from three perspectives. The first one is acceleration. The second one is convergence. And the third one is uh, stability. From this acceleration, um, we indeed uh, provide deeper insights into understanding acceleration. We call it AA uh, in reinforced learning. Uh, so uh, establish the connection with quasi Newton method for policy iteration. Um, because we know policy Newton method um, is sort of uh, uh, um, the original uh, TD method uh, is actually is kind of uh, only use first order information. Well, of course, Newton method um, use um, sort of second uh, um, order information. Well, we build this uh, a connection between AA and quasi Newton method, in a sense, to show that why this AA method can uh, make the algorithm faster. Um, the second contribution is uh, convergence. We actually proved this Anderson mixing increases the convergence radius of policy iteration scheme by uh, an extra uh, contraction factor. The third contribution is uh, we propose a stable uh, regularization and uh, uh, introduce the theoretical principle, uh, principled mellow max operator into Anderson mixing. And therefore we have a stable AA algorithm. Uh, you will see later on why we choose this mellow max operator instead of the original um, um, Bellman operator. Now, uh, let's first look at uh, uh, the first two, acceleration and convergence. So the understand acceleration uh, in policy ingredient uh, is doing uh, in uh, through the following uh, process. Uh, we, we want to find the optimum value of state uh, action pair Q star SA. Um, usually we could recursively um, do this uh, um, process Q star as A equals uh, this one through so this equation two. And uh, um, the Anderson acceleration linearly combine M previous estimates to yield a better iteration target in the uh, fixed point iteration. So in a sense, we are not only use previous, um, the previous estimates, instead we use the previous M estimates. How do we use it? Um, we do it 
uh, through this process. Okay, and this one minus speed k times this part, and plus speed k times this part, and this t is uh, the um, Bellman, uh, Bellman uh, operator, and this speed k uh, is the dumpling parameter. Dumpling parameter. Now, um, as you can see here, um, we have this dumpling parameter, uh, bit k, and uh, we said, okay, we do this linear combination of m previous estimates, but how do we do this linear combinations? How do we determine those weight alpha? And the way we determine the weight alpha is uh, through um, the following optimization curve. We, solve this optimization, a sort of R2 optimization or restricted R2 uh, optimization program to get the weight alpha k. And of course the constraint is this summation of alpha k, uh, alpha i uh, is one, alpha i is one. And uh, here this ek, um, we use this ek to define this third k prime t and the ek is this uh, uh, Bellman residual matrix. And uh, you may think, okay, um, you want to make the algorithm faster and then you need to, uh, here you actually need to solve extra things. Um, that's a good thing is from this uh, uh, TKT condition, a uh, KKT condition, uh, we can actually get the uh, analytic solution of the optimal uh, coefficient alpha k and through this one. So we can solve for and uh, get a closed form of alpha k. And then, um, so this is the um, interesting acceleration process. Now, let's look at the connection with uh, uh, quasi Newton method. Quasi Newton method. Um, we actually have this uh, um, um, property, uh, proposition. Um, here, um, if we want to conduct the damped uh, Anderson acceleration, uh, which is uh, uh, through this two equation, uh, this one, uh, we get this uh, policy iteration, we have this uh, uh, dumping parameter, and also we have the, the weight alpha. The weight alpha is solved through um, optimization problem four. Um, if we process this, um, on the policy iteration, then the Q, the Q value function update can be reformulated as for the K plus step, it's actually the K step minus this part, minus this part, okay? And the uh, EK is this uh, uh, policy residue. And um, well, let's look at the GK. The GK part can be written into this form can be written in this format. This GK actually serve as an uh, approximate of the inverse JKB matrix of EK. That's why um, the, X, X, uh, the AA method um, can be faster because this part, this uh, red part, um, in GK actually contain partial structure matrix and information about the real inverse JKB matrix. In a sense, we use partial second order information and not just the first order information. If we look at this uh, GK closely, okay, um, if we get rid of this part, the red part in GK, and if we set beta K equals one, then you will see the update actually is just the um, degenerate, degenerated uh, Q value function iteration without this uh, Anderson acceleration. So here we actually build the connection of this uh, uh, Anderson acceleration method, this AA method with quasi Newton uh, method. And uh, theoretically to show, mathematically and theoretically show that why uh, it works, why it can make uh, the iteration faster. Now, um, let's look at the convergence rate. Okay. The convergence rate. In order to study the convergence rate, uh, we need certain assumptions. 
um, the uh, first assumption is on um, Bellman operator T. We assume this Bellman operator T um, uh, acting on state action value function Q has a fixed point Q star. And also there are two positive constants, C1 and C2, so that um, the following three holds. One is T is in C2. The second one is the first derivative of T is bounded by C1. The third one is the second derivative of T is bounded by C2. <coughs> what does this mean? It means if we want to have a faster convergence of AA, um, that's not free lines. We need to have certain condition on this uh, uh, Bellman operator. We need to require the uh, differentiable of uh, this Bellman um, operator. Not only that, the derivative uh, should be bounded. The first and second derivative should be bounded. Uh, this is the first condition. Now, under those conditions, we can have the following theory. If those coefficients, um, alpha i k, remain bounded away from zero, then the following bound holds for fixed point residual e k. So this e k, an infinity norm, uh, can be bounded by uh, this part, c k times this one, and uh, plus c two times this one, plus c two uh, times this one. Uh, this seems a very complicated. Uh, um, um, bound, but don't worry. Um, uh, let's have a closer look. And also later on, we will see under uh, a sort of stronger condition, we can get rid of some of those um, uh, some of those terms. The first term in this equation seven actually characterize an increased convergence radius uh, with a factor ck. So the previous one is just this part. Now we have. Uh, uh, radius of CK. Okay. And uh, um, in, in order to uh, get rid of this second term and uh, third term, we need uh, uh, further uh, assumptions. So here, uh, let's look at uh, um, the assumption two. The, assum the assumption two is also on a Bellman operator. We require this Bellman operator is gamma contraction operator. What does this mean? It means the infinity norm of TQ minus TQ prime is less than or equal to gamma times Q minus Q prime infinity. Okay, uh, infinity. And this is sort of like, like uh, Lipschitz continuous. Well, we require uh, this uh, um, gamma uh, to be. Um, and fix at a certain point. Now, this condition actually uh, is sort of uh, a gamma contractive property of uh, um, Bellman uh, operator. With this uh, uh, feather condition, with this feather um, contraction condition, uh, together with assumption one, we can actually um, get a better bond. Uh, we can get the um, the uh, final faster convergence of this AA on reinforced lane. Now let's look at uh, the bound we have. Assume um, both conditions are satisfied. Assumption one, which is on the um, uh, smoothness or, or differentiability of uh, um, Bellman operator. Assumption two is on the contraction of the Bellman operator. And there are um, both assumption one and assumption two, um, the coefficient alpha i k uh, still remain bounded away from zero. And then the following bound um, holds uh, for residual e k and uh, our depths m. So this infinite norm of the residual is less than or equal to this and plus big O of the previous region, okay, because uh, we use the pre previous M uh, estimate, okay, previous M estimate. And as you can see, like I said before, 
Um, in order to have a faster convergence, uh, we have to um, require uh, differentiability of uh, the uh, environment operator. And also we need this uh, gamma um, contractive assumption of this uh, 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 operator. It seems uh, uh, you know, quite good, but unfortunately the, um, the common max operator uh, in T is not differentiable. It's not differentiable. So um, we are very exciting at the moment. Then we check this uh, um, max uh, operator, uh, Bellman operator, and we find it's not differentiable. Then we said, you know, how do we do it? And then um, I remember we actually um, can do some smoothness to get a smooth operate, uh, uh, smooth version of this uh, um, Bellman uh, operator. So we look at this uh, one alternative, which is called the Boltzmann uh, softmax operator. But then we find it's not expensive. It, it is not non expensive, which means it works it divert. It work divert. Uh, so after some research, we, we find this uh, uh, mellow max operator. Mellow max operator. We, now let's look at this. Uh, um, Mellow max operator. The um, smooth version of the Spellman operator, which is called a uh, mellow max operator, uh, is not only differentiable, but also it's non expensive, non expensive operator. So we actually able to show that this mellow max operator can simultaneously satisfy both assumption one and assumption two. Therefore, if we use mellow max operator, we can achieve um, this faster convergence of AA. So therefore, um, using this uh, uh, mellow max operator, the resulting um, Bellman operator will become TMM, and which is defined as uh, 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 equation nine. Now uh, you may wonder what is this mellow max operator? Uh, it's actually defined as this one, uh, defined as this one. And here the, this uh, uh, omega is a tuning parameter. Uh, we will see how this tuning parameter is going to affect our um, fast commodities uh, um, later in the experiment. Yeah. So this is uh, a mellow max operator. So finally, um, we put all this together, we would have this uh, uh, Q value estimate QK equipped with AA and can be obtained by uh, iterative applying this mellow max operator uh, starting from some initial value Q0. Um, the uh, iteration process is through this uh, um, equation 10. And as you can see here, um, this beta k is a dumpling parameter. Uh, we use uh, linear combination of the first uh, of the previous m estimates, and uh, the combination is through this uh, um, weight alpha i alpha i k. And while well, this uh, uh, Bellman operator is replaced by this uh, mellow max uh, operator. Now um, we uh, have studied this uh, acceleration and convergence, and uh, um, we um, build the connection with uh, of the AA with Cauchy Newton method. We know why and it, it can be faster. And also uh, we study the convergence rate, and uh, um, we see indeed um, under certain condition uh, we would be able to get a faster convergence rate. And then we also find uh, a um, operator to re replace the Bellman operator so that um, indeed we can achieve um, the faster convergence rate. Now the next would be um, the uh, stabilization analysis. Okay. Um, to do the stabilization analysis, um, as a statistician, uh, we know um, an easy way uh, to do the stabilization analysis is, uh, you know, you know, for example, 
uh, in the regular regression, we can add the R2 penalty so that uh, we can have a rigid regression, then we can sort of get a, a stable result. And similarly here, uh, we add this R2 uh, regularization of this tau k. Tau k, uh, as you can see, it's related to this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, weight R of k. Uh, first, uh, um, I need to claim uh, without this uh, penalty term, this uh, red part, um, to get the weight alpha r, alpha j, it's equivalent to solve this one and to solve this problem. This hk actually defined as this one. Um, this hk is uh, uh, is this one. Uh, it's the related to the residue, and uh, this is the original problem. How we solve this problem to get the weight alpha k? It's equivalent to this uh, uh, this part. Now, uh, as I said. In order to get a stable result, um, for the original problem, we add the additional um, R2 uh, penalty, R2 penalty. And uh, um, after we adding this uh, R2 penalty, we can still um, we um, we can still get this uh, uh, closed form uh, of this uh, uh, tau. It's tau k equal to this one. We get this closed form. And uh, through this tau k, we can use uh, back solving because the tau i k to this one. Uh, we can use the back solving to get this r. And uh, the computation cost for this part uh, is uh, uh, is small. It's relatively small. Now, uh, why are we um, um, why this uh, r two penalty? And would be able to achieve the stabilization uh, effect. If we look at this, uh, um, this 11, we see if the R gram indeed converts, we would have the, this limit uh, equals this limit, this star KF equals uh, this uh, uh, HKF equals zero, okay, equals zero. So uh, this term is zero, this term is zero. Therefore, um, the sort of R2 regularized weight is the same as a non-regularized, right? Uh, so the coefficient on regularized term vanish as R gram convert, it will degenerate to the original Anderson acceleration method without this uh, uh, stable regularization. That's why, um, you know, and uh, it's one of the reasons why it works, why we, why we choose this uh, um, R2 regularization. Now, um, let's based on this solved stable regularization tau k, um, this, uh, this tau k and the relationship between tau k and the R alpha k, um, as you can see here, as you can see uh, here. Um, uh, we can derive the update of the QK plus one in policy grading as a following. Uh, as you can see, uh, the um, K plus one uh, value function is the case value function minus six part. And the difference uh, is this GK function, this GK function. Now uh, the GK function, uh, the GK tilde function get a, a more complicated form. In particular, let's get this part. Let's get this part. And uh, um, <clears throat> as you can see here, previous without this part, we need to, to find the inverse of HK transpose HK, and uh, it may not be uh, um, a stable. Here, we add this uh, um, R2 penalty, then um, we can actually achieve this uh, stabilization um, effect. Now let's uh, um, look at this uh, 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 stabilization uh, effect more rigorously. Okay, um, more rigorously. Um, the matrix GK two actually satisfies this this condition, and that's you know um, from here you can see why um, we would be able to have this uh, uh, stable. Uh, stabilization effect. 
And also another thing is uh, we can see a larger um, strength of uh, regularization yield um, and uh, a proper magnitude of beta K can uh, yield a more uh, stable result, a more stable result. Um, now let's look at uh, the coefficient, the weight coefficient alpha and with and without re, uh, regularization. So we denote these two weight uh, mixing coefficient vectors obtained by um, vanilla um, unconstrained and our stable regularized Andresen acceleration. And then um, we define the transformation matrix as A uh, satisfy this condition. Now, um, we let this denote as a conditional number of A, and, uh, um, and then we have the following inequality. The R2 norm of this regularized one is less than or equal to this one. Well, um, the difference of this uh, uh, non-regularized and the regularized one have this bound, uh, have this bound. Of course, this bound is uh, uh, related to the um, conditional number of A, this transition matrix, uh, transformation matrix A, and also it's related to this, uh, um, uh, the, the uh, number of mixing, the previous M estimate, how many previous uh, uh, estimates we use. And if you look at the, the first one, you will see it's actually related, also related to the um, um, regularization parameter E. Now, um, um, that's how we do this stabilization. Now let's look at uh, this uh, stabilization effect on this uh, uh, mellow max, okay, mellow max. Um, as we said uh, previous, this mellow max operator actually satisfy uh, both assumption one and assumption two, which is the differentiability of and the non-expensive. So therefore, um, we would be able to have uh, um, a, a fast uh, convergence of uh, Anderson acceleration in policy uh, iteration. Um, actually, both mellow max and the soft max, as previous uh, um, we um, we talked about soft max. Soft max actually satisfied assumption one, but not assumption two. Um, both uh, mellow max and soft max, uh, they are capable of reducing the overestimation bias. So therefore uh, they can reduce the greedy noise to stabilize the optimization problem of this uh, neural network. Now, um, um, for the reference, uh, I list the um, um, algorithm for the stabilized um, Anderson acceleration algorithm. I, so in summary, this stabilized uh, Anderson acceleration algorithm can be reformulated uh, into this form, into this form. Um, now, uh, as you can see here, uh, previous, we have alpha I, uh, K, and now it's replaced by alpha I tilde. And uh, um, uh, let's recall this alpha I tilde actually is uh, the, uh, it's obtained through this stable regularization. And uh, we actually use the uh, relationship between this tau K and alpha, uh, alpha K tilde. And through this, we can find this uh, alpha I tilde. So this uh, uh, coefficient, this weight coefficient has been stabilized already, and also this uh, we have this uh, uh, mellow max operator, which replaces the um, Bellman operator by this mellow max operator. Of course, um, uh, like previous we said, uh, we can also uh, replace this uh, uh, mellow max operator by this soft max operator, um, but. Um, it, it, it sometimes it can still get a uh, uh, very good result, but uh, it cannot guarantee, it won't guarantee the uh, fast convergence. So uh, this is the whole um, <coughs> um, 
algorithm for this uh, uh, stable A8, for this stable A8. Um, like I said, um, uh, a couple key steps. One is, uh, you know, how we, um, uh, how we choose um, this uh, uh, mixing weight uh, alpha. And uh, um, we, we solve it through this optimization program. And also we can stabilize it uh, by regularize it. And then another thing is uh, we replace this uh, uh, Bellman operator by a metal max operator. Um, that's the um, <coughs> that's the uh, whole um, and damper Anderson acceleration uh, Anderson mixing. Um, framework on this uh, deep reinforced learning. Uh, in particular, we look at this acceleration uh, through the connection between uh, AA and uh, our quasi Newton method, and also the convergence analysis. We look at the condition um, when we would have a, a faster uh, convergence rate, and we actually find that the two conditions, one is the differentiability of this uh, operator, the other one is non-expensive. Um, uh, uh, or this uh, algebra contractive uh, condition, the operator has to be uh, 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 to be contractive. Uh, unfortunately, the Bellman operator uh, does not satisfy the two condition. Um, uh, alternatively, we find this mellow max, uh, a smooth version of this uh, uh, Bellman operator. It's actually satisfied uh, both condition, and then um, we um, find a way to stabilize our, our process. Uh, through this L2 uh, penalty. Uh, and uh, now um, let's look at uh, some experiments. Let's look at the effect of our uh, framework. So here <clears throat> for the experiment setting, we apply this stable AA and undoing DQN. And uh, we actually uh, choose some representative uh, uh, Atari environment, we have the space invaders, uh, Enduro uh, breakout and the crazy climber. Uh, we choose these, uh, these four games, these four games. We actually um, run these uh, uh, experiments on all these uh, uh, 49 Atari uh, games, um, but we only choose uh, um, four representative ones. Now here is uh, uh, the performance of our stable uh, AA. And we uh, put the learning curve uh, over here and uh, this uh, um, black one is the baseline, it's doing DQN. And uh, this uh, um, blue one is uh, uh, doing DQN uh, plus a regular um, an AA and then the red one is our master. The red one is uh, our master. And the shaded area correspond to the uh, standard deviation, uh, standard deviation. And from all these four uh, games, we can see a faster convergence and a significant improvement. And for example, for example here, for the space invader, um, as you can see at the beginning, uh, uh, it seems all these three methods are quite close, and then our method uh, uh, start to beat all the other two methods. And uh, um, I want to say for this uh, blue one, um, uh, um, you may recall at the beginning I said this AA actually has been heuristically used uh, uh, to this. Uh, um, to this uh, um, deeply reinforced learning already. But in that variant, um, they, uh, they, they actually just uh, um, naively uh, use this uh, um, AA uh, in this uh, Bellman operator. They didn't uh, do any uh, rigorous mathematical investment. And that's probably why they, uh, they uh, use the original uh, Bellman operator. Well, here we actually use this uh, Mellow Max because we find the mellow max actually can indeed um, um, uh, get a faster 
camera use. But the point here is even you use a naive method, it can be can still be faster. Um, although sometimes, like look, if you look at this one, um, uh, it might not even be the uh, baseline uh, without using acceleration, and which you, you, we lost our purpose to use uh, uh, to use this uh, um, uh, acceleration. And here for this one. It's all quite close, all quite close. And for this one, as you can see, sometimes it can achieve uh, quite close result to our um, framework, to our framework. Um, now uh, let's do some uh, ablation analysis. Uh, remember um, for this, uh, um, um, for one of our contribution is we add this L2 penalty to make uh, uh, the result more stable. Now um, for this uh, R2 penalty, we have this parameter eta. And uh, let's look at how this parameter eta are uh, going to contribute to this, uh, um, to our framework. Another thing is uh, we actually use a mix of uh, a mellow max and also penalty. And, uh, and we want to see for like uh, indi individually, if we just use stable um, penalty, how um, it's going to perform, or if we just use mellow max um, to replace this uh, uh, Bellman operator, how the result will look like. And uh, <clears throat> we still look at these uh, four games. Uh, we look at the baseline, uh, the, um, um, this black one is the baseline, we look at um, the baseline plus a stable uh, uh, regularization with parameter 0 0.1 and baseline plus stable uh, regularization with parameter one with parameter 10. And also we use a, a sort of a combination uh, stable regularization parameter 0 0.1 plus mellow max. Well, the mellow max get the, uh, the um, parameter five. Uh, remember, for Malamax, we have a, a hyperparameter omega. We choose omega to be to be phi. Um, as you can see here, for this one, um, it seems um, they are all um, the improvement are all uh, very good. Well, for this one, uh, you will see um, you know um, different um, penalization parameter may have different effects. And sometimes uh, it's good, sometimes it's not. Well, the combination of uh, stable regularization and mellow max actually, um, as beginning, uh, it can even um, be worse than some of them. But eventually, it it, it, it's, uh, it is a win. It is a win. And we can see the joint benefit of uh, uh, stable regularization and mellow max operator uh, uh, even more clearly uh, through this um, space invader uh, games, as you can see, they jointly, um, it can, uh, it have a very large margin to beat all the other mass, all the other mass. So <clears throat> what's the uh, taking home message here is, uh, um, we uh, should um, combine this uh, stable regularization and uh, um, this mellow max operator. So they jointly, they can benefit uh, the um, uh, our framework. Now, <clears throat> we also look at the performance of uh, uh, some other uh, game. For example, we have a look at this uh, chopper command uh, without uh, no frame skipping. And we have this uh, demo attack, no uh, frame skip. We have this uh, 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 first byte no frame skip. We have this uh, ice hockey no frame skips. Um, as you can see, um, sometimes the uh, effect, for example, this one, the effect of our ma our method uh, is um, <coughs> uh, it's very good, but sometimes it can be you know the um, increment is marginal. And sometimes 
um, the um, the uh, effect is mixed. It can be bit this uh, uh, naive AAA. Sometimes naive AA is better, and and so on. And for this one, at the beginning, our uh, acceleration method actually uh, was beat by all the other two methods. Two methods. And um, um, here are some other um, uh, four games. And we have a Kung Fu Master no uh, Framescape. We have a MS um, Passman no Framescape. And we have a Pitbot no uh, Framescape. And we have a Pong no uh, Framescape. And uh, um, as you can see, um, overall, our method at least um, is um, comparable to other methods. And um, um, most of the time, uh, it will be able to um, beat uh, the baseline and uh, the uh, naive AA. And from this one, <clears throat> actually you can see um, the naive AA actually uh, complete fail. Uh, the naive AA uh, is being beat by this baseline. It's been Beat by this baseline. Um, so that's why, um, you know, uh, sometimes uh, this uh, rigorous mathematical analysis can help us to, you know, design better uh, methodology. And uh, some other uh, games and, uh, um, and this private eye and uh, this job tank and uh, this uh, um, yes. Uh, revenge and this up down, and uh, um, we all observe uh, similar uh, result. Similar result. And so, um, um, what's the conclusion here? Um, the conclusion is um, our framework, our damp uh, Anderson mixing framework, actually can achieve this uh, acceleration, and can have better convergence, can have a stable result. And also, we showed this uh, uh, in this uh, um, in our experiments. Why we would be able to um, achieve this uh, acceleration? The reason is uh, um, this AA actually uh, close connected with this quasi Newton method. In a sense, um, this AA is uh, a um, a version of this quasi Newton method, a version of this quasi Newton method. And that's why it works, and also. And at least it's not getting, most time it's not getting worse. And then uh, at what kind of condition we would be able to get a, a faster convergence? Um, we did this analysis and uh, we find the conditions so that we can have uh, this uh, uh, ultra uh, contraction factor uh, uh, through these two conditions. One is the differentiability of this uh, um, uh, operator, the other one is uh, um, this non-expensive or contractive uh, condition on this uh, um, uh, operator. For this purpose, we have to replace this uh, uh, Bellman operator by this uh, um, Mellow Max operator, Mellow Max operator. Oh, by the way, we also uh, did this experiment for uh, soft max and uh, um, most of the time uh, the soft max can achieve uh, as good as the mellow max, but sometimes it can it, it can fail and, and also can uh, you know uh, fail very badly. And uh, um, in order to uh, make our um, framework stable, we actually um, um, uh, introduce a theoretical principle mellow max operator and also at this L two um, penalty uh, to make our um, you know um, a framework. Uh, more stable. And uh, uh, we did um, this experiment for all these uh, Atari games, and uh, we choose some selected ones uh, in this uh, um, presentation. Um, the next step, we actually want to, uh, to uh, apply this uh, um, stabilized uh, Anderson acceleration in uh, distributional uh, reinforced learning. And we are right now, uh, we are working on this uh, on this problem. Uh, you may think, okay, um, you have uh, uh, truly studied this uh, 
uh, framework in deep reinforced learning, it, it should be very easy to, um, to extend it to distribution reinforced learning. Actually, the question is not that easy uh, because for distribution reinforced learning, the iteration, um, we are not looking at uh, uh, this value iteration. We actually iterate to each step, we would get a, a reward function. We would get a, a, re, um, a, reward, a reward distribution. And uh, uh, there are a lot of, uh, um, you know, theoretical and also practical challenge in extending it to uh, distributional uh, reinforced learning. But anyway, uh, we are working on that right now. Uh, I think that's all for my talk. Uh, thank you uh, for your uh, listening. Thank you, Lingluo, for the very, very interesting talk. Uh, do you have any questions? Uh, you can either um, send your question in the chat window or um, in the Q&A uh, panel, either one is okay. Um, uh, Jerry, you can also collect uh, questions from other um, social media. So while we're waiting for possible questions coming in, uh, Lingluo, can I ask you some questions? Yeah. I think you did a very extensive uh, uh, simulation uh, studies with very many uh, games. I'm just curious, most of the game and your method, uh, Mellow Max plus regularization perform the best. But for example, in some cases, uh, there are some, uh, um, yeah, you see the plot, there's some crossover. Do you have any uh, summary or intuition in terms of uh, under what type of games or under what type of environment? your methods will perform the best. I know you have very nice theoretical results. Um, uh, so, we so actually also do the other, we also did other game, not just uh, in Atari game. And um, our experience is um, if the game is very simple and the representation of the, um, if you don't need a very complex representation, the acceleration usually uh, doesn't work well. And um, I forgot what can, we, we have some, we did some experiment on some simple games. Um, sometime the result, uh, the acceleration, the, our method won't be able to beat the, the baseline. I see, so your method particularly can deal with very complex situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, How about the dimensionality? See, in your network, usually the dimension can be quite high. So would your method perform better in terms of a very high dimension? Um, are there any possible observation there? Yeah, um, if the neural network is uh, uh, complicated, it's large, the dimension is large, our method usually is able to uh, achieve better result. I see, so yeah, that's quite a, it's quite nice, especially I think for DRLs, the, the, the most challenge come from the complexity of the neural nets and the high dimensionality uh, yeah. challenge. So um, uh, yeah, I have a, another question. So you have a, a nice improvement in the contraction factor of the theory, right? The, the theta, I cannot remember the notation exactly. So uh, I'm just curious if you could give us some intuition on how did you get that improvement? Yeah, I don't have time to, uh, I don't have the chance to read your paper, but I will be very um, I, th I think uh, <clears throat> um, why we, we, we are able to get the, the improvement, the, the key thing is, uh, like I said, for this acceleration, um, it's actually this kind of a quasi Newton method. And we use the partial information of this uh, uh, Jacobi uh, matrix. And therefore uh, we use the second order information uh, so that, you know, um, it can make uh, it, a bit faster. Ah, I see. So followed by this um, idea, if you do even higher order adjustment, you can get even, I don't know, sharper results. Are there any sort of a optimality? Theoretically, yes. But mm -hmm. then <clears throat> the, the question is, how do you get higher order uh, information? And what's the cost? Um, you know, um, if in each step, uh, the cost of uh, uh, 
you know, the two things is one is whether we can get the higher order information. The second one is uh, what's the cost? Yeah, for example, what's your cost right now? Um, our cost here is just uh, uh, solve this, uh, um, uh, to get this one. So it, it won't cost much. Yeah. You get a closed form. You yeah. Just do, yeah. Yeah, I suppose if you work on your distributional RIO, you will not have a nice analytical. Yeah, that's <laughs> at the beginning, we saw that, you know, uh, even in um, doing this paper, we saw that, you know, uh, um, actually at that time we are meeting the, the deadline and one, um, uh, one bottleneck is uh, the completion. And the other one is, uh, you know, um, let's just get this done in um, just, uh, DRL, uh, um, re regular reinforced learning, and uh, it should be easy to extend to a distributional reinforced learning, but unfortunately it's not. And when we start to do it, we feel like, uh, you know, it's just like open a box of worms. So we decide to, you know, to do it later on. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a very interesting, I mean, I read your distributional RL paper before. I, I really think they are very interesting. So I'm just curious. Uh, but I think it's quite challenging in terms of the computation and also the analytical form. So, yeah, yeah, I think even the proof uh, uh, would be very, very challenging. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think we get uh, any. Um, oh, yeah, there is a question. Let me read the question from Rinjo. One is the method tied closely to the mellow max operator? or other smooth operators can also be used? Um, yeah, uh, like I said, um, in, uh, at, at the beginning, we, we did think about to use mellow max, but then after we, do, we did some research, we find that you know, the operator need to satisfy the two conditions. One is the differentiable, the other one is uh, um, it, uh, it, it must be non-expensive. And we find that the um, Bellman operator does not satisfy this condition. Then uh, my immediate thought would be to use this uh, soft max um, version of the Bellman operator. But then we find that it's not expensive. Uh, it's not not expensive, although it satisfies assumption one. Uh, so that's why we use uh, a mellow max. Whether it's tied close to this uh, mellow max, um, um, I, I would say maybe yes, maybe no. Um, um, yes, uh, it's because I don't know whether uh, any other operator um, can write to a Bellman operator certify the two condition. Uh, no, uh, uh, it's also the same. Maybe we can find uh, some other, um, you know, uh, operator. Uh, uh, approximate version of this uh, Bellman operator. It also satisfies these two conditions. Maybe even had the better properties than Mellow Max. Yeah, seems like an open question, huh? Yeah, um, we actually start with Soft Max, uh, and uh, uh, it's all, it's it's actually close to the deadline, and then we find it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, we find uh, this uh, uh, Mellow Max. <laughs> Wow, yeah. So yeah, softmax is, I heard that more often. So, so yes, yeah, more common for us, but uh, it really depends on the performance, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, if we do not get other questions, um, I think we may, oh yeah. Thanks for the answer and it's a nice talk. <laughs> Thank <my> you. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, Limo, for for this. I, I I do think there's a lot of work, for example, discussion on the other smooth operator than your distributional RL. Um, do you have any other uh, like a direction you think that's promising for working on RL right now? <laughs> I know uh, like I said, I only started to work on RL like. Uh, uh, Two years ago, uh, you see the the book uh, "Rich Start and Give Me." Um, um, you know, I only worked on it for two years. I don't know, and I, I don't think I have the you know authority to say which direction. Um, but for our group, we are working on uh, some distributional reinforced learning 
because for me, I quite close to uh, my research in statistics like quantile regression. And uh, one of my student uh, is also here. Ke is working on robustness of this uh, distributional uh, reinforced learning. And my postdoc Yafei is more working on how to um, combine the uh, optimi optimization techniques with uh, on uh, uh, this uh, uh, reinforced learning. And uh, one of my base PhD students is working on offline of this uh, reinforced learning. Yeah, that's, you know. Yeah, thanks for the sharing. I, I, yeah, I hope we can invite more speakers in the related areas. And um, um, if we don't have more questions, maybe we can um, stop right now. Um, Thank, thanks, Lin Luo, again for this very insightful, very interesting talk. And thank you all the audience for being here. Um, so we will see you um, in two weeks. Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye.